Well, this looks like a very unique contraption here. It's kind of interesting. I'm really not making this for a video of like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Maybe I'll down the road, I'll show you guys the finished product, but it's an excavator arm for a little mini excavator I'm building for my son. But mainly I'm posting this video to show something I've kind of just kind of looked around and couldn't find much information on. Pass on to others that might be in a predicament and then want to try something out. Just saying it works now, it could be benefited and improved upon. But what I took was, um, I had some pneumatic cylinders working on a pneumatic system for the excavator for my son. I want one of those gravel sandbox excavators, but kind of taking it to the next level here. It's going to probably be a year before I'm finished. But anyways, the pneumatics, even with the needle valves on them to slow them down so they move nice and slow, if they got hung up under something, say some gravel, it would come up and fling up really fast. So I want to do hydraulic, but I don't want crazy power either. Of course, he's going to be under adult supervision operating this thing. But I thought of something, I knew you could do um, air over oil, but you need a, a reservoir and you need to run air into it and some single action cylinders and if you want a dual action cylinder you'd have to have two reservoirs and it seemed complicated, there's going to be at least three cylinders on this thing. So I got pneumatics, I'm staying in the 100 pound range here and right now I'm just running water through the system, of course it's going to cause corrosion sitting in there long enough or freeze. I could use antifreeze, but I don't want the toxic element. If I could find uh, something that's not uh, toxic, maybe I'll run in there. But uh, anyways, I took, um, got rid of pretty much running an air pump on here. I got a little bottle up here. It's a reservoir with water in it. I might down the road uh, flush the whole system out and try canola oil, something lighter like that too. Again, you won't have a problem with it freezing and breaking anything. But anyways, right now, just to prove a concept, I'm running water out of this thing to a little 12 volt pump. I think it's 100 PSI, like a backpack uh, chemical sprayer pump, something like that is like 25 bucks on eBay. I got a valve here and I'll show you guys this thing in action. Once it goes and builds up to 100 PSI, it shuts the pump off again, so it's gonna be very efficient. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys a close up here and show you about the power it has on it. All right, you guys, to show you the power of it here. It's uh, the cylinder's metric, but I can't remember. It's just slightly under one inch bore. And I think we got about 100 PSI on the pump here. And uh, I got three house brick. They're not the ones with the holes in the center. I'll weigh it and see what uh, the weight is. I don't have a scale on me right now. But of course, it's extended past about three inches past the bucket here, but we'll roll the bucket back. It's got pretty good power there. The stand is not part of the excavator. I just needed something sturdy enough to clamp the with the welding clamp the arm on here. It's kind of pretty robust little system. The little excavator arm is actually a third third smaller than my little backhoe for my tractor. So, anyways, um, yeah, pretty much just clamped it on this tabletop for now. But got a little water bottle up here. It's a reservoir. This is your outlet line going to the pump, and this is my return line coming from the valve. Just goes down here to this little uh, simple backpack sprayer pump, well, kind of like an RV water pump. It's got a pressure switch, so when it reaches 100 PSI, it shuts itself off. Got a high pressure line going to a valve here. Got my return lines coming back to the tank. Got my control lines going to the cylinder. Got this cylinder up here, but I don't have a second valve for it yet, so it's just sitting here floating, so it'll move back and forth. But yeah, this one's got the, the pressure to it right now, and it's actually pretty solid, you know, that's another nice thing. Air is springy, this is definitely not, so if you put a lot of pressure in it, it won't move at all. So I'll run this thing back. Pretty good. And the little excavator is going to probably be uh, 12 or 24 volts, so I think it should be pretty efficient with that pump turning on and off like that. Alright you guys, just wrapping up the video here. Like I said in the beginning, this is just trial and error. I've just kind of wanted to post this just to kind of get it out there on YouTube. I haven't found much like this. Found one guy actually building a little digger machine for his son and he ran a garden hose into it. That's a pretty cool little setup because you got water but you're constantly losing the little water off the back. 
But uh, anyway, so yeah, it's just kind of proof of concept. I've been kind of thinking about this for, I don't know, a month or so. I've been kind of designing it. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be probably running something that won't freeze up. I might run oil or water-based antifreeze that's non-toxic in here. So I've been looking into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, I'm mainly posting this just for someone else. If they come across something and do an application like this, probably not a kid excavator. I don't think too many dads are building these things. But uh, you might find that you need a low slip speed, uh, really controlled um, hydraulic system that's uh, low pressure. Maybe not, but I'm just putting it out there on the internet and maybe somebody gets some use out of it. So uh, guys, stick around, check out my other videos and keep experimenting and learning new things. Take care. Bye.